Hey, Vinyl Committee, Jeff here again with some finds. Um, uh, yeah, this was this was a great day, but uh, only if you're into this kind of stuff, which I am. So, um, you know, I've always got that, and I, I try not to make it morbid or anything, but I always have that thought, you know, when you walk into a thrift store, you're always like, what if today's the day where somebody around my age group and musical tastes either totally gives up on music or the once to get rid of their vinyl maybe they passed away and their wife just donates the vinyl what if you walk into the thrift store and there's actually good stuff well that's what happened over the weekend however the good stuff is stuff that's kind of of my age group but it wasn't like mainstream music it wasn't uh you know there's like I'd be love to walk in there and find like a whole smorgasbord of, you know, hair metal type stuff, 80s metal. But it wasn't that. It was mostly, mostly, as you'll see, um, more of a CCM type category, which is a kind of stuff that I have a lot of, um, but a lot of stuff that I didn't have. Um, bands that I never really sought out back in the day because I was getting into the heavier music on the, you know, CCM side. Um, but things I could take a chance with and I'm like, okay, and I walked away with you know Like 20 albums and I left behind at least that many that I already either already had or really didn't think I was interested in in pursuing having those uh, records So let me show you what I got actually the first one is totally totally unrelated and This was actually one of the first ones I saw before I noticed all the other ones, but I got the uh, uh, Back in the USA by Springsteen and look at that. It's in the shrink. It's the shrink is ripped, but it's got the hype and it's got the shrink on there and it was in great condition. I'm going to polish it up uh, It just looked like I had some fingerprints, but it was in great condition. So yeah, I don't see much Bruce Springsteen in the wild um, That one time I bought the box set which is over there uh, That has the live albums in it, but I uh, never see much of a stuff and never do I see it in, in this kind of decent condition So I did grab that then I started hitting the stuff um, And again most of this is you know just stuff that Either I maybe had heard in the background back in the day. Uh, my roommate in the military was into a lot of these bands, and so I was familiar with them. This first one, though, is one that I've been on the lookout for uh, that I've never really seen out in the wild. I've seen one of their other albums, but never the first one by Bastion the Code. You're Bastion the Who? Very poppy, very upbeat, um, quirky, very flashy, lots of colorful costumes, very 80s pop type stuff. Um, they did this album, they did another one, uh, and then they, then they changed their name to just Bash, and they did some stuff there, and some of their songs almost kind of came off uh, like it was geared towards children, kind of, sort of, kind of sing-along type funny songs. But overall, when this album came out, I really liked it. It was not, you know, it wasn't in the heavier side, but it was just really cool, upbeat stuff. So definitely, that that was to me the score of the day when it comes to this particular collection. All right. Um, only the very best by Steve Camp. Now I have a lot of Steve Camp on vinyl, but I never, you know, and I don't usually buy best of albums, but in this case I did because it's best of some of the earlier stuff. And I think I have most of the earlier stuff, but there, you know, maybe, maybe I missed someone in there somewhere. He had some stuff that I wasn't even aware of back in the day. So I went ahead and grabbed that again. Oh, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Every one of these albums, and this is just a sign for me, but you know, when I pull an album out, of the sleeve and it's the opening is up to the top meaning you can't slide it out of the sleeve without pulling the inner sleeve out that usually to me is a sign that's of somebody that took care of their records and i will find i found that every one of i stopped checking after a few minutes but every one of these i checked was like that and every one of these that i checked the album was mint it was just looked unplayed it was beautiful covers in great condition anyway so I was like, wow, this guy, person, whoever, took care of their albums. All right, Black and White and the Gray War by Leslie Phillips. Um, I think I may have had this, and I might, this may have been one of the ones I recently got rid of in a batch of stuff. But they had this again, and I thought, well, I'd grab that. Now, you may, you may be familiar with Leslie Phillips in the sense that she put out a couple albums in the pop side of CCM, and then she... She changed her name, her moniker, to Sam Phillips, and she put out quite a few alternative, not uh, nothing related to the CCM field, nothing in in that in any religious vein, and she's put out quite a few albums from there. She also appeared in a couple of movies. She was in Die Hard with the Vengeance. She was that, or oh, they Russian. She was the Russian girl that you know kicked his butt with the short hair. 
she went on to do that once or twice. But in the earlier days in the 80s, she was very pop oriented uh, on Christian labels. So um, got that one. And this is the reason I bought that one is because I've, I've never had the turning. And so I bought this. This is one of her later albums. Um, and I think the ones I had may have been, she's got like four albums out. And this is her third and fourth, I believe. And so her first and second may have been the ones I had previously. I don't know. So I grabbed them. This is kind of a rescue mission. Some of these are like, you know, I don't really need them, but I went ahead and got them. This was also kind of a, 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 a score in the sense that it was a batch of them. Randy Stonehill Equator. Now, I had this album already, but again, I'm sure this was an upgrade. It was in great condition. I checked the one that I have, and it actually was in great condition too. But I bought these as a set because I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Um, and it turns out there's two different label variants on the, ends of the inner labels, and I now I have both of them. Not that that's a big deal, but when you're looking at Discogs, it's like, oh, it's a different label variant of disc pressing. Um, Randy Stonehill, uh, I have a couple of his earlier things, but this era, I only had this album, so Equator, um, Love Beyond Reason. This was the one I was most familiar with back in the day. This was, I think, the album that came out around the time that I was with my roommate. So I'm probably most familiar with this album. Uh, Celebrate This Heartbeat. I don't think I've ever heard this one before. But again, uh, had to get the whole set. And then The Wild Frontier, which is probably one of the more popular ones that you hear about a lot if you're into this kind of stuff. And so I was ex really excited to get this one to round out that selection. All right, and this was just a, str a, str a straggler that went in there. I'm Mike Warkey. Good news tonight. Good news tonight. Yeah. Um, and I know there's been some controversy with Mike Warkey in later years. I saw him live a couple times back in the day. I had all of his out, most of his albums back in the day, so I pick him up. He's still funny, regardless of whether he's been shown to base some of his stories on falsehoods, <laughs> on fiction rather than, you know, whatever. Uh, whatever the controversies, he bases. Uh, if you're familiar with his story, he he wrote a book called The Satan Seller, and he was he based his whole persona on the fact that he used to be heavily into Satanism. He was like a high priest in some satanic group. He did a lot of horrible things. He became a Christian. He came out of that. And so his story, he's a comedian, stand-up comedian, and he's very funny. And then there's always a point where he gets somber and serious. He tells some of that story, and, you know, it's got a very dramatic close. That was his stick. And so, um, like I said, I've seen him live in a person. Um, and his albums are, you know, he's he's funny, he's quirky, he's like a hippie, he has stories about being in the military and the crazy stuff they saw. Just, you know, stand-up comedian. But then later in life, I guess it came out, proved that he never was a high priest. And I don't know, They, they apparently his stories were all, I don't know, there's so much out there. That who do you believe, whether he was true or false? But he had a great ministry. Him and his wife had a great ministry. They did a lot of good for a lot of people. So maybe it was based on something. But um, anyway, Living Fire by Glenn Allen Green. I don't know a whole lot about this album, but I have seen it around a lot on some of the sites that I buy from. And so I thought, okay, I'll check it out. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be 80s uh, AOR type pop. Maybe some rock in there. I've seen this guy's album before. I kind of always passed him up because I know he's very uh, smooth and and not a whole lot of pop sensibility there. It's just kind of like very, uh, I don't want to say crazy, but maybe. Forgotten God Alone by Steve Green. Now, Steve Green started out, his first album that I heard him on was the first Whiteheart album. But then the band Whiteheart, this is a story I seem to recall. The band Whiteheart wanted to go a little edgier, and he didn't, so he branched off and started doing solo albums. They went on to become a rock, and they got progressively harder with each album, until they became a, a you know hard rock band. So you know, I I know that he's got a great voice and everything. I just have never had his albums before, and they had a second album there, which was a Christmas album, but I did pass on that. But I grabbed that one because that I think might be his first or one of his first. I remember seeing this one back in the day all the time. Um, and then, okay, we got two of these. So Benny Hester Legacy. I actually saw this album in great condition at a thrift store a couple months ago when I bought all that classic rock stuff at a thrift store. Um, but I passed on it because I'm like, I don't know. I hear a lot of good things about Benny Hester. Never really listened to him. But I hear a lot of, I hear a lot of stories about how great of a lyricist he is. And if I'm not mistaken, this is who I'm thinking of. And so he gets a lot of high praise. And I thought, well, I might as well have him in his collection for, 
for a couple dollars. So I got that one and Through the Window by Benny Hester. So, and I listened to that one. And yeah, I mean, it's got some pop sensibilities. It's not as, I thought it might be a little more mellow, but it's not. Anyway, great stuff. All right, and this guy I had heard of, and I knew he was upbeat and poppy, and I don't know why I didn't check it out back in the day, because I liked a lot of bands like this. I just don't know why I never checked him out. I think my roommate definitely had this. Serious Fun by Billy Sprague. So I grabbed this, you know, I thought, yeah. And it is. It's 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 up there with uh, the kind of bands I listened to in the day of this were like Steve Taylor and some of those guys that were quirky, fun, and upbeat. And that's what this is. Great stuff. And then I got another one, Why, uh, What a Way to Go. Also, Billy Sprague. I think these are like his first two albums. He did a couple more after that. Um, so, yeah. So, I grabbed those. So, these I was a little iffy on because I knew that he was on the lighter side of things. But there was a reason why I went ahead and got these, which I'll tell you in a second. Um, and that is uh, Love Then While We Can, Chris Christian. Chris Christian was always more of a, known to be more of a lighter <clears throat> AOR type. Not even rock. So these were like a, a sort of a gamble. I was like, I don't, you know, don't know a ton about him, but I do know that he's had the stuff reissued um, recently on Girder Music, some of his other albums. So I went ahead and took a chance. Again, these were kind of like rescue these and see whatever, uh, what, what I end up liking. Again, it was another thing where I'm like, where well, they got a couple. So I grabbed these and then the Mirrors of Your Heart. This is kind of a best of collection of his slower stuff um, from previous albums. So I went ahead and grabbed those. The reason being is because not too long ago, and I did I show this? Maybe I did show this in a video a while back, maybe two, three months ago. I picked up Chris Christian live at Six Flags with Whiteheart. Now I mentioned Whiteheart a minute ago with uh, Steve Green back in the day. This would have been right after I think Steve Green left. So what it? This was an event live at Six Flags and. My understanding is uh, Whiteheart were playing there. Chris Christian came out, and they were his backing band. So, and and then of course the Whiteheart Live at Six Flags album is the companion to this. Of you know same show, and they play, and then they're his backing band. So, so I had this. This is the only Chris Christian I had. So I thought, you know, I'm going to take a chance. To grab his other stuff just because it kind of goes hand in hand so um and then this one was cool i'm always picking up these this is like my only dipping into gospel um is the imperials and the later that the imperials got into the 80s they you know they started changing and becoming more almost poppy aorish um they just you know became a little more modern and so this is a much later you know not much but a later uh, one of the more modern albums. And this one's side by side. This is actually a double album. They only charged me for one album, which was nice at the thrift store. And um, my understanding of what this is, basically, there's four guys in, in the Imperials at this point. And each side of an album, you can see the side songs here. And then if I pulled it out, you'd see the guys on the back where I can show you the back. The other two guys in their songs, um, each one of them sings. These, this guy sings this song, this guy. So it's, it's kind of like a feature of the... Of who the lead singer is on those songs so that was kind of neat a double record set of all of those songs by these guys um and this is one of the this is probably the more the most recent imperial album i got <clears throat> i have some of the earlier stuff and i have the one right before this now i got the one right after and then this one i admit i didn't really know anything about it or who it was until i got home um but it looked like a cool album and that's paul smith turns out paul smith is one of the guys from the imperials and this album came out i guess around this time um he's not these two guys it's the guy on the back here this guy right here with the frizzy hair so this is one of his solo albums he did quite a few solo albums this is one of them so um i'm assuming it's going to feel up branch off into a different feel than the imperials i have not uh, yet checked it out so there you go it was a great find there were a lot of things i left behind some that i already had some that i didn't have there were a lot of the female artists i wasn't real big into the female pop at the time the kathy tricolis and the and the uh, Desario, and there was some Sandy Patty, um, and then they had a lot of Dallas Home and Praise, which I saw him in concert back in the early days with with a couple guys from church. Um, but again, he's kind of a country-ish, slower stuff. Um, they had a Mile of Ever I'm already had. They had a Steve a Steve Camp I'm already had. They had uh, um, Farrell and Farrell. This was like all some of the prime bands of the '80s. And they were all in great condition. Steve Archer, which I didn't know much about, but I really should have bought those because I went back and listened to him online. And he's very, uh, at least his earlier stuff was popular. 
uh, fun stuff. Anyway, it was a great day. Found a lot of stuff. So the albums are supposed to be like a dollar ninety nine. I don't know if they want to sell or whatever. The guy rang it up at a dollar forty nine. So you know, I came out of there with that and some other stuff we bought for my granddaughter and still paid less than I thought I was paying for the albums. But yeah, some great stuff. So somebody just dumped an entire batch of near mint CCM material there. So I was happy for that day. So anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it a little bit. And I'll see you later. Rock on. Rock hard.